Some people are on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Hello and welcome to They Think It's All Over. With David and Jonathan this week is a man who, after beating Chris Eubank senseless for 12 rounds, was awarded the World Super Middleweight title, as well as the Nobel Prize for twat flattening. <laughs> Joe Calzaghi! <laughs> With Gary and Rory is a comedian who's also a lifelong fan of St Johnston and Scotland. So he's 46 years old and he's never tasted champagne, punched the air or seen an open-top bus. <laughs> Fred McCauley! <laughs> It's handbags time now, all about Barneys between sports stars. David, Jonathan and Joe, your squabble involves two giants in the world of boxing. <laughs> so that's Ricky Gervais from The Office and Joe's manager, Frank Warren. So why the verbal fisticuffs? David's team. Before we start on that, Nick, <laughs> we must discuss what's happening in Zimbabwe. Because we still don't know whether David is or is not going out to Zimbabwe. <laughs> no, I mean, this is worrying stuff. He could die out there, and not just from old age. <laughs> I've told him he should either buy a bulletproof jacket or put that old bat he used to use down the middle, because nothing ever hit the centre there, did it? <laughs> it's a very complex subject, let's be honest, no, and, and it's a very serious subject. I think, probably on balance, that the team shouldn't go there, but David should. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would satisfy everyone. I was saying on matters of deep principle, they should not go. Yeah. You were just and scared. that horrendous The principle being that you would have shat make... yourself if you'd got yeah. there. <laughs> he was even more scared when he found out Sky had only bought him a one-way ticket. <laughs> there was a preview of the Cricket World Cup, and they were speaking in The Guardian about all the commentators, OK? And I've written this down, because they wrote about uh, David, and they actually wrote, Gower batted in much the same way he would make love to a beautiful woman. For hours and hours. No, no, no. <laughs> then you'd get in the crease, then you'd be out again. <laughs> and you were always getting, always getting caught behind. <laughs> oh, there must be, there must be more than that. That's it. <laughs> well, you know, we should think about the situation in Zabai, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Where was it again? Zagreb, you're on to now. <laughs> There so, was, boxing, uh, boxing! Never mind boxing! boxing. <laughs> well, I have a suspicion this might well be something to do with celebrity boxing. I mean, it's just a sort of... just a hunch. It's hey, Joe, what, isn't it what? nice to have an actual... Step back. A champion on the show, what? ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> isn't your name Cazzoni? That's what they call Here's those pizzas. Me. They fold in half, isn't it? <laughs> Keep it up, mate. I'll be folding you in half. Is that oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, Joe! Please, please, please! Please! Joe, I believe it's right. You're half Welsh, aren't you? And half Italian. There it goes, yeah. Man, that's a mix, isn't it? I imagine that makes you eligible to join the most feared crime syndicate in the world. The Tafia. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's a good job. No, you want to worry about them, you cross the Tafia, they'll make you an offer you can't understand. <laughs> you could wake up with a sheep in your bed. It happened to him. <laughs> no, but seriously, you will always be... You will always be a great... British champion to us, Joe. Thanks a lot. Until you lose, what? then you'll be a stupid Italian bastard. That's right. <laughs> That's okay. The Zimbabwean prince here, he thinks celebrity boxing, is that right? Yeah, yeah still with Frank Warren, I suppose. Yeah. Frank Warren's a promoter, obviously. Yeah. And uh, we're going to celebrity <laughs> boxing, all the British boxing board the control. It's a bit of controversy where they didn't sanction the fight and they think it's dangerous. Yes, Joe had the oh. answer correct. Thank you very much, Joe. Well, Three points to David. Well done, Joe. Well done. <laughs> Good work. It's all about the BBC celebrity boxing shown last month when Gervais beat Anthea Turner's husband, Grant Bovey, on points. The BBC have cancelled all future unlicensed fights and have banned us from showing you any of the bout after Frank Warren complained they were making a farce of the noble art. The tragedy, of course, is that this will simply drive celebrity boxing underground, <laughs> although it does mean Leslie Ash can finally take her gum shield out. <laughs> The BBC were actually planning a fight with Wendy Craig, but that's now off, so Audley Harrison will have to find another <laughs> opponent. <laughs> Gary, Rory and Fred, here's Liverpool edging out Manchester City in the Cup for the right to that oh-so-easy home tie against Crystal Palace. Murphy to take, and 
to score. Liverpool lead. Your run-in is between the city manager, Kevin Keegan, and the entire city of Liverpool. So why did the Scousers turn on their honorary favourite son? Did Keegan make a reference to that famous Scouse television ad about um, washing up liquid, you know? Hey, ma'am, why are your hands so soft? Cos I'm 12. <laughs> <laughs> Any nice memories? Did they have a special song for you on the, on the top when you played there? Um, they did early on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last year in the UEFA Cup, I was doing a match for um, the BBC, and after the game, I was waiting outside, signing a few of the kids' autographs. And this little tiny kid, he's about eight years old, he came up to me. He said, "Gary, how much did you get like for them Walkers Crisps ads?" And I said, "Well, a little bit more than your pocket money, sonny. What? Twenty grand a week?" It's so sharp. Kenny Dalglish came out of the uh, tunnel once at uh, Anfield, yeah, yeah and uh, we boy came up to him and he went there. Uh, Shite today, Kenny. And he said, uh, no, yeah, it's sunny, but I might have one later on this evening. <laughs> <laughs> See how it goes. <laughs> kind of touch some cloth now you mention it. <laughs> so you're a St Johnston supporter, aren't you? I am indeed, yes. Do they have any celebrity supporters? <laughs> <laughs> There was actually a celebrity supporter. Ewan McGregor uh, came to see St Johnson play and uh, he had a polo neck on. I don't know if you've got the story in the papers down here, but they said he couldn't go into the boardroom afterwards because it was strictly collar and tie. And uh, the secretary of St Johnson said to me, listen, Fred, if you ever want to come and see a game, just give us a call. So I decided I'd phone and uh, take him up on this offer. We go out and we're sitting down to watch the game and uh, there's a defender called Dodds. <laughs> <laughs> and Dodge went in for a tackle and drew back a bit and the secretary, who'd been telling me how to behave properly for the last four hours, stood up and shouted, Dodge, you f***ing shat it! So, Fred, will you be joining us afterwards yeah. for another cup of tea? Because <laughs> I used to watch Fred's show. You used to do a show with uh, Ali McCoy, didn't you? That's right. Yes. In the evenings. Well, you used yeah. to say that when his wife called anyway, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're here with me now, aren't you? Yes, I am! <laughs> Actually, you might have seen him on Celebrity Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And uh, they got a tricky question and they said to Ali, we can phone a friend. And they phoned the friend and the friend went, yes, I, we were just playing pool all night and we had a few beers. And, uh, <laughs> I think it's something to do with uh, something to do with the stereotype of um, Liverpool being car thieves. So I remember once I was driving through Liverpool and got a puncture on Scotland Road by the docks, and uh, so I, you know, got round the back, took the spare tire out and the jack, and started lifting the car up. And while I was doing this, some bloke got in the front seat with a screwdriver and started having a go at my dashboard. So I said, "What are you doing?" He said, "If you're having the tires, mate, I'm having the radio." <laughs> the only bit of that that really rang true was the idea of him driving down by the docks. <laughs> You could just picture that, yeah, couldn't yeah. you? Well, he hadn't even stopped it. either, he was just going that slow that the bloke got in. I think... <laughs> now, I think he, Keegan said something about the transfer of, of Robbie Fowler, the ex-Liverpool hero, to, to Man Keegan's own Man City, and it suggested he wouldn't go to Liverpool in case he got his old cap stolen, like, you know. Mm. And it caused... I think there was a, a, ra a radio phone in Liverpool got swamped by people calling and saying, I'm not a car thief at all. You know, and obviously I know a lot of people who are like, but uh, like my little sister, she's a car thief. Like, you know. But uh, I'm not, I'm fucking doctor, I am. I'm senior registrar at Liverpool Royal Infirmary, me. Obviously I have nicked a few cars every time, like. You know. He's virtually the correct answer for three points, yes. Robbie Fowler is one of many Leeds players heading out of Ellen Road in the club's big sale. Harry Kuehl could go for £10 million. Eric Backer is on offer at £2 million. And if you buy any two defenders, you get David Batty free. <laughs> in future, all Leeds matches are going to be shown live on the Shopping Channel. <laughs> and at the end of that round... David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. We move on to Sporting Bluff now. David's team, your question is all about the true origins of the game of cricket. Here's the earliest footage that has survived. <laughs> so that was WG Grace and some other old men. <coughs> Now, you bastard. <laughs> that tickled you. <laughs> Gary's team, 
New evidence has emerged that cricket was invented by the Scots. New evidence has emerged that cricket was invented by the French. New evidence has emerged that cricket was invented by women. Yeah, who invented cricket? Come on, David, you must know you were there. If you look close at the Bayeux Tapestry, you can see David just sloping off with his bat up his arm. Yeah. <laughs> Did you earn a living on the side as like a Harpo Marx in person? <laughs> he boiled it. Hong, hong, hong. I think there was a reference in Dumas' Three Musketeers, actually, to cricket. There was a, a game between England and France described therein, and the England score... <laughs> Not fair. <laughs> he's just talking. He's just talking <laughs> properly, and we're laughing at him. He's been reading some racy Chaucer again. <laughs> the French and cricket. Can you imagine French in ancient times? The kings playing cricket with their ridiculous powdered faces and silly white wigs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? It was the Scots. French countrymen. Is it the Scots or the Scotch? Scots. Why do Frenchmen... The Scotsmen don't like you calling them Scotchmen, do they? No. Why not? It's, um, I'm just confused. <clears throat> a, a book by Robert Burns and something therein. <laughs> <laughs> to recall. Fred, to be fair, they have played cricket in Scotland for quite some while. It took a while to get going because no-one would actually produce a coin for the toss at the start. <laughs> Welsh, good cricketers? Um, no. Beat, in, beat no. England? No. What? Did they beat England last year? One day? Didn't count. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's convenient. Yeah. Joe, what do you think? Women and cricket? It goes on and on and on, so very possible, isn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, hey. Sorry, women, I don't mean that, I don't mean that. <coughs> See, but when he says yeah. it with his smouldering good looks, he gets away with it. Yeah. We get booed. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies, I'm don't sorry. you love him, ladies? Right. <laughs> oh, oh, so we've got the lesbians in again, then. <laughs> it's the hair. They think I'm one of them. They think uh, I'm a regional weather girl. <laughs> a regional weather yeah. girl? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, yes, Captain? You're I our cricket man. You're our go-to person for cricket. I think we're going to go for once. OK, so you think that Gary was telling the truth. Let's see if you're right. <laughs> yeah. Good work, Captain. Well done, Joe. Good work. Good luck from the lady, man. So, Gary was right. According to a recently unearthed manuscript, cricket was invented by French soldiers in the Hundred Years' War. English cricket took a huge stride forward with the invention of stumps 400 years ago and the leather ball 300 years ago, and then a huge stride backwards 200 years ago with the invention of Australia. <laughs> Gary's team, it's Michael Jackson's favourite side, Exeter City, scoring against Charlton in the FA Cup. Now, apart from Michael Jackson and co-chairman Uri Geller, there is another celebrity connection with the Devon Club. What could it be? David's team? Exeter's latest club director is Harry Potter. Exeter's latest... Just read what is therein. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll find it's thereon. <laughs> David's performing every night at Ye Comedy Store. <laughs> <laughs> Only gags recycling. <laughs> recycling? Yeah, recycling. That is recycling. <laughs> Exeter's latest club director is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Exeter's latest club director is Darth Vader. So, have Exeter City appointed Harry Potter, Buffy or Darth Vader to their board of directors, Gary's team? Michael Jackson, eh? What a f***. <laughs> <laughs> I did sort of think, when you watch it, though, I imagine this is what Jonathan's house is like. <laughs> Didn't you? Yeah. I must be. I was at home going, oh, look at his garden, he's got a roller coaster. why can't I have a roller coaster? <laughs> <No, no. laughs> well, seriously, wouldn't you, if you had that money, wouldn't you have a roller coaster in your garden? <laughs> I heard that uh, after the documentary went out that Michael is considering taking legal action against people that have said things about him on broadcast media, so yeah. I'm glad I haven't said anything well, about the chiseled <laughs> feet of the face freaky geek. Yeah. <laughs> What's that thing he has in his, his garden? He has this tree called a giving tree, yeah, doesn't he? That yeah. he, he um, sort of climbs for inspiration for his songs and his music and his friends. He's a 44-year-old he's a man. It's not a giving tree he needs, it's a receiving bush. <laughs> <laughs> Short of mouth. <laughs> I've got 
got a giving tree. Have you? Have you? Yeah, I climb up it to sit up there and write my comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Has he got Dutch elm disease or something? <laughs> <laughs> What's your thing, Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Any yep. thoughts on that? Uh, Rory, you're the buffet slayer, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> right, what's the other one? Darth, Darth Vader. The Darth Vader. Fred? I suspect it might be, but not, not the James Earl Jones. I think it's more likely to be David Prowse, the West Country inhabitant, uh, whose voice they removed uh, as Darth Vader, but I can just see him at the Exeter City board meetings giving it... <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, <laughs> basically, we should concentrate on shagging adults. <laughs> How does the board feel about that, then? <laughs> so you think that Jonathan was telling the truth? Let's see if you're proud. right. So, Jonathan was truthful for once. Darth Vader, as played by actor Dave Prowse, was recently invited by Uri Geller to become an honorary director alongside Michael Jackson and magician David Blaine. Vader is the only Star Wars character currently involved in professional football, except Chewbacca, who now works for Sky Sports under the name Richard Keyes. <laughs> Now he's a director of the club, Michael Jackson has announced big plans for Exeter City. He's personally going to pay for a 35,000 all-seater crash. <laughs> <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team ah, have six oh. points. Time now for some pitiful excuses. David's team hears the rare sight of Mark Bosnich between the sticks for Chelsea during their embarrassing European exit against Hapoel Tel Aviv. Can Bosnich produce another heroic save here for Chelsea? <laughs> now, in the autumn, Bosnich tested positive for cocaine, after which he was sacked by Chelsea, a decision which was upheld by a tribunal last week. But he claimed to be pure as the driven snow. So what was his excuse, David's team? Rory, well, of course, you can see he's been mainlining gravy. There's no way he'd pass it. <laughs> Your hair's got a bit eye eye tonight. You've got an extra tuft. Have a look at that. Have I? Have you had, is there a bird nesting in there or something? <laughs> look at that. It's like a microphone on top of your head. <laughs> you're, not, you're not the Jackson brother they don't talk about. <laughs> there was God! Where... What would you have to be yeah. to be the Jackson brother they don't talk about? <laughs> Jonathan, do they. You've heard of Imodium, haven't you? Imodium? Do they do a verbal version? <laughs> Well, maybe, is it... Had he been shaking hands with Maradona? Was he auditioning for Blue Peter? Any, any of these things sound mm -hmm. mightily plausible to me, but no-one else. <laughs> <laughs> you get spiked. You said you got spiked in the club or something in the drink. Thank you. The voice of sanity on that team, Joe Calzaghi. Right. Three points, thank you. Thank you. Mark Bozic claimed in time-honoured fashion that someone had sneaked up when he wasn't looking and spiked his drink with cocaine. Mark <laughs> Bosnich got into trouble a few years ago when he gave a Hitler salute to the crowd at White Hart Lane. It was the most shocking thing to have happened at Tottenham since Gary Lineker broke into a sweat in 1991. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's team hears Scotland slumping to inevitable defeat against South Africa last summer. It slipped through for Kumantarakis! Now, that was one of four defeats in German manager Bertie Vogt's first four matches in charge, including 5-0 against France and 4-1 against South Korea. But Vogt has disclaimed all responsibility for those routes. So what's his rather bizarre excuse, hey, Gary? Never, never mind that. What was the French excuse for only losing 5-0? Only winning 5-0. Fantastic, <laughs> Gary. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> Gary! Hold on. He Where's had to it? say the word winning, Where? and he chose the word losing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it again. Gary, any thoughts? None whatsoever. <laughs> is the excuse a diet thing? Because the Scots are famous for the diet, aren't they? I mean, there is this Possibly. misconception that all we do is eat fish and chips, and we don't always do that. I mean, you, you know, you'll take fish and chips home, you might not finish it off, and then in the morning you get up and you have the chips cold. And that's a salad. <laughs> sure, isn't it? So it's good to see Danny just taking over and... I think it's because... Yeah. It wasn't really his I team yet. Yeah. I think Gary got it right. Yeah, well done for three points. Right. 
Bertie Votes claims that he wasn't really in charge for those matches at all. He said, I did not know the players or their positions then. Really, my first game was at home to Denmark, which, of course, he lost as well. <laughs> Votes says that there are now so many foreigners in Scottish football, it's hard to find 11 decent Scots who can actually play, especially with injuries to Sheena Easton and both the Proclaimers. <laughs> Scotland are now so low in the world rankings, they're below Zimbabwe, New Zealand and Honduras, which puts them just above Narnia, Hogwarts and the two remaining Bee Gees. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Gary's team oh. have nine points. Now for our regulars to fanny about in the dark as we play Field of Sportsman. David and Jonathan, you're first this yeah, week, first. if you'd like to take Thanks your position. So take your blindfolds with you. Can we have our first mystery guest, please? OK. Dig deep. You can start your feeling now. Hold it, there's more than one. Hang on, that. I think on. mine are both male, unfortunately. Oh. Well, <laughs> let's swap hands, David. That makes David. it change, doesn't it? <laughs> Gower catches ball. <laughs> Wait a minute, it's yours. Hey. You know what? I'm pleased to see yeah. Michael Barrymore back on TV, but I'm questioning his choice of quiz show. <laughs> Barry Moore's pool party was an unwise selection. <laughs> <laughs> They're all over the place. That's some sort of... It's like Graham Norton's dressing room. <laughs> I don't like it one little yeah, bit. Jealous. I'll tell well, you. I, if <laughs> Michael Jackson wants to share his swimming pool and give some love to some pre-teen boys, what's wrong with that? <laughs> How are you, little blanket? <laughs> Did you get that milk you okay. needed, little one? <laughs> Come over here. I'll hang you off the balcony so everyone can have a look. Come on. <laughs> Let's have a look at you. Off the balcony. There you go. That's the Hey. Come on, boys. Water polo. Water polo. Level. Um, national, international, Great Britain, yeah, national England. British, England. Scottish, Thank you, the England polo, water polo team. Yeah. Gary and Rory, positions please. Blindfolds on when you get there. 90 seconds, as always. <laughs> to work out who you're molesting. Can we have our second mystery guest, please? Okay, and your time starts now. I'm gonna read that later. Oh! Jeez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's what Emil Heskey practices on. It's <laughs> <laughs> it, something on ice. <laughs> Rory! It's it Angus Deaton's career. <laughs> you Rory, leave yeah, alone. It's, it's snowing in here. It is Mark Bosnick. <laughs> Hello. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Dear. Yeah, Gary, I think it's right. something golfy. It? Have a go, mate. Hang on. What are you doing? <laughs> it's Roger Just... Beams, our ice golf champion. <laughs> That round, Gary's team have nine points and David's team have 12. <laughs> 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 we 
We wind up the show by playing the name game. The team in the league goes first, which is David's team. Come on, then. Joe, can you pass those along to Jonathan, please? We have a chance. As many names as you can in 90 seconds. Hold on. Starting now. OK, uh, he's your manager. Uh, second name is where Frank a bunny Warren. lives, Frank Warren. OK. Uh, <laughs> this is the bloke. He's Anthony Turner's husband. He lost to Ricky Gervais. Bobby. Bobby. Yes, lovely. Well, if it's a bloke you work for, you call him... The boss, boss, boss. boss, boss, boss and the boss, second name is... Uh, it's almost uh, Russian for no. Yet. Nick, that's close enough. Um, what? OK, what very, very hairy cricketing bloke. Used to play with you, I believe. WZ Grace. That's it. <laughs> OK, this is an American football player. Second name is a, a lady with very large breasts goes out with footballers. Honk, honk. Jordan. Jordan. First name is the Wait, state she appears to be in most of the time. <laughs> also, Jack one of the lesser-known Jackson hey, brothers. Yes, not Tito, not Jermaine, not Michael. No, it's... Um, it's not catatonic, then, is it? No. <laughs> Hey, oh, I'm feeling really... Oh, David, I'm feeling... No, not holy, like that. Randy, Randy. That's it. Yeah. OK. Uh, OK, this is the first part of this Zimbabwean bowler's name is, uh, is where you go to pick up gay men. Hampstead? Heat <laughs> Street. Yes, that's it. Heat Street. Heat Street, well done. All right, this is a... Uh, if you're... He's a senior, I'm the... Junior. That's right. Second name... He sounds him. like Gary Glitter. It is... With her. Gary with her, man. With with All right. Her. This is a boxer. He's in your class, I believe. Second... <laughs> first name is the second name of the What's American that? president last. The president <laughs> Bill... <laughs> Clinton. Clinton. And second what? name is... Yeah, there you go. All right. Um, this is... Oh. oh. <laughs> OK, 12. 12? 12. 12. You've done 12 before. You've done 12 before. Yeah, you can do OK, 90 seconds to get 12. Your time starts now. I would dearly love it if, if my hubcaps got stolen by... by Kevin Kagan. Like um, this is... <laughs> You're a nice boy. Come back to my room for milk and cookies. OK. Oh, uh, no, Michael Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> you see? Michael Jackson. Jackson. Oh, oh he's on here. First name, my old college at Cambridge. I'm trying to raise the intellectual level of this. Uh, Imperial? Um, it's he it's <laughs> Imperial. Hebrew for the Lord is with us. OK, it's a, it's a 70s porn film with <laughs> Sylvia... <laughs> Daniel! No, thank you. Uh, second name, old word for a leopard. It's sometimes black, this wild cat. Puma. No, Panther. 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 Thank you, Emmanuel. Second. Emmanuel yeah. Panther. This is an Italian goalkeeper who's a bit of a clown, you might say. Only that the on the end. Cool. Very Buffon. good. And his first, first name, name is famous. The department store clown. in Oxford Street. John Lewis. John Lewis. <laughs> in Italian, please. Uh, Luigi. John Luigi. <laughs> John Luigi. Very good indeed. <laughs> Second name is the king of rock and roll. Elvis. Presley. <laughs> <laughs> That's Presley. Said it. First name is is a, a common first name. Stephen. Thank you. Oh, well done. The second name is another name for a spliff, Gary. Is that that bloke you look like from Lord of the Rings? Dobby. <laughs> <laughs> and the first name is he, not. Is he, one of you? You're one Dobby. of these. You're one of these. Scott. Yeah, Scott Dobby. Very good. Scott. Uh, right, this is. If you're in a, a Liverpudlian fish market. Yes. You would. <laughs> <laughs> Another way for the steal. Sorry. Well done. Well done. Well done. So, Gary's team have 16, but this week's winner is David's team of 20. So, our thanks to David, Jonathan, and Joe, Gary, Rory, and Fred. We're all off to spike Gary's lemonade with Tizer. My name's Nick Haycock. They think it's all over. It is now. <laughs> all this Sunday night, we are covered in the chat of the Silver Fox. Parkinson night starts here tonight at nine. Next, this early morning, have I got news for you? I do, so don't go changing, unless you're in therapy. <laughs>